Welcome back to Xenoblade Chronicles X. So before we do anything else, let's talk to Carl here. Yeah, I've gotten some pretty annoying missions. Like needing a random knife in order to attack enemies instead of using the one I have. Now we have to investigate a cave uh, near the area, so let's do that. Okay, we set our destination. Now let's go there. Like so. Now we're supposed to go up these cliffs that we've been up before. If you can tell, we're in the what near the west entrance of the city, colony, town, whatever you want to call it. So we just jump out these cliffs, and not too far from here, we should find that cave. Apparently, it should be right under us. If I'm not mistaken. So I guess we could just jump down. Here we are. Oh, <laughs> look at the baby piggies. Even if they're monster piglets. <laughs> so we can choose whether we fight them or not. We can fight them or we can decide to leave them alone. But they're, they're just cute little piglets. Cute little piggies. Yeah, I can't. I can't attack them. Well, um, we'll just ignore the fact that I've probably attacked a number of tiny pigs on the field already, but that's beside the point. So we can either attack them or we can just go back. I kind of like that. We can go to a monster mission, and then just go back and not fight the monsters. And that's what we're going to do. So yeah, let's go back to 
Carl, I believe. Yeah, that's... Well, good. Maybe we can find another solution then. No, we... We complete the mission! We... We essentially won by doing absolutely nothing. Awesome. Strength comes from experience. That's true on any planet. I'll never understand why she needs to elaborate on that. Okay, so let's go into the Blade Barracks, after that little mission. Cause that's not what the focus of this episode is about. It's also not about customization. We check on here. We can finally do the chapter 4 mission if we want. We did everything we had to right there. So now we can actually start chapter 4. Here we go. Hmm, what should I whip up today? Um... <laughs> we have so many choices, what do we want? I would probably choose something fried, personally, but... Chicken satay. Linley, sometimes Tatsu wonder if Tatsu is too cute, too adorable. Oh yeah? As leader of Blade Team, Tatsu need cool and tough image. Yeah, that happens sometimes. Is Linley even listening to Tatsu? What? Sure I am. Hey, what if you got a tan? A little color could do wonders for your image. In fact, I've got the perfect lotion for you. I'll even help you apply it. Well, that... Uh, okay, if Lily insists. Wow! Thank you, thank you, Lindley. Tanning oil smells so sweet. And is a bit sticky. Tanning oil? That's just plain old honey. It's the crucial step for a perfect chicken sauté. The Honey Mary. Lindley! Tatsu, not chicken! Tatsu is Tatsu! Oh, right. How could I forget? Lindley is not funny! Tatsu is not happy! Okay, folks. Hope you're hungry! Lucky thing I happen to be in the neighborhood. You say that every time, Commander, but you always arrive as we're setting the table. Oh? You don't say. Hmm. <sighs>
All right, listen up. We found something in Noctilum thanks to Frontier Nav. That's northwest of here, Rook. Looks like a piece of the life hold. That's great news. Damn right. Look at this. Oh, friends mean Nightglow Woods. Is that what the Nopon call it? We didn't have names for anything here, so we've been using Noctilum for that whole region. <laughs> well, that's a silly name. And Nightglow Woods isn't? Ahem. <clears throat> Moving on. Right, sorry. According to the Pathfinder's report, there's a large number of indigents in the area, but thankfully no sign of any intelligent life forms. No, no, that's wrong. Nopon visit Nightglow Woods all the time. Yeah, well, like I said, no intelligent life forms have been reported, but it never hurts to be cautious. Mm, friends patronize Tatsu. Nopon proud and brave people with rich history, you know. Pipe down, small fry. Or I'll make that nickname come true. <laughs> we'll have you check in with Lau's team first. They're already on assignment installing probes in the area. We don't have a fix on the life old signal, just a general direction. See if they've got more info. Got it. And there's our mission. You have to go to Noctilim. We're counting on As you can tell, we have to find Lau's team, which is near Noctilim. We're gonna leave and do just that. I guess I could add a couple more things to the Collectopedia and get some more battle points. Nice. Also at this point I'm probably going to be edging out some of the load times. There aren't a ton, I guess. But it'll still save a few seconds, which is nice. I don't know, let's check with these things, the arm manufacturers. Now they slowly add up how much... Uh... Uranium they have. But we can invest in order to make it go a lot quicker. Right now I'm gonna make this a pretty even number. Solid 300 for that one. But that's about it. And with that, I think we're off now. Yeah. So this is far northwest. Very far northwest. One of the areas I explored but sadly didn't get to do anything with because the recording just failed. That shouldn't happen anymore because I don't save until I make sure the recording is done. And, you know, successful. Like I said, we're immediately attacking Lil Pig. It's not that small a pig, uh... It's 
Just a quick little battle before we head into the cutscene. Their team is right over there. Hey, hey. Look who it is. Wow. It's been a while. It has. Are you going to introduce me to your friends? Where's Danny and Boris? These are my new team members. As for Danny and Boris, we had a bad run-in with a powerful indigen. They didn't make it. I see. Hey, look. I'm sorry. I hadn't heard. It's okay. And what's up with this onion thing? You using it for rations or something? It's Tatsu, not onion or ration. Tatsu is no pun. Brave and distinguished people with long history on Mira. <laughs> it talks. Where'd you find this thing? Rescued him. He was about to become lunch for some prone, these hostile Xenos we ran into. He's agreed to serve as our guide here. Wow. Okay. And you? What's your story? Are you really as young as you look? Sure am. Thirteen years old inside and out. I'm Lin Lee Koo. Well, hello, Lin Lee Koo. You must be something to be able to make Elma's team at thirteen. All right. What about you? Might as well try to make him introduce himself first. Shouldn't we? <laughs> Aren't we the friendly one? Well, whatever. We've got an interesting crew here. But they seem capable enough. I chose them personally. I figured. So, I heard Nelson's whole team got wiped out by some nasty new Xenos. Is that true? Yeah, those prone I mentioned. They're not sure if they're the ones that destroyed Earth, but their tech certainly seemed advanced enough. Really? We better watch our backs. By the way, we picked up a life hold signal in the direction of Noctilum. Have you or your crew come across anything? Where? Around here? I take it the answer is no. Yeah, this is the first I've heard of it. We bumped into another team and they didn't mention it either. I see. All right. We were hoping your team might have a lead or some more info, but no such luck, huh? Well, thanks anyway. We should go. Hey, hold up, hold up. Mind if I tag along? But your assignment? We're more or less done here. We just need to report back. Well, until you do, you're not done here. Oh, give me a break, Elma. The rest of my crew can handle the paperwork. We're talking about a piece of the life hold here. I've never even seen one. That's way more important. And besides, you might need the help. Finding it or handling the indigents that get in your way. Now, come on. Hmm. Oh look, a tutorial to tell you to use the Frontier Nav more. Cool. 
can we get random uranium from when I guess and Leo can now join our party okay I guess for now we should actually just let him join our crew. We'd used Irina enough. There we go. But also we should uh, check out some of the things he has. He does not have headgear, that's the first disadvantage. Now is Hideo Kojima? Uh, okay. Let's go with that, I guess. No, in actuality. I'd prefer to just to have their faces be normal, so just put on the pads that it doesn't get in the way of their face. See if any of the other equipment is good. Oh, that's much better. It literally only lowers one of the elemental things and upgrades all the other elemental things. Not to mention other sad things. I'm not sure if they should overdo it though. Might be an advantage to have some of that uh, that one elemental advantage. Especially if we get this party member right now. So just to be safe. Also obviously we want to upgrade his skills. At least to level 2. There we go. Yeah, why not? Get that one to level 3. I want this character to be useful immediately. His other teammates are just gonna stay here. Doing nothing forever. Okay. While we're here, we might as well grab some few more items and uh attack something. Use him in battle before we go to our, a new continent. <laughs> Here's some cool melee attacks I have to admit. Okay, yeah, that worked out well enough, I guess. The more items we can grab, always the better. I suppose that is enough. Not too far from here is Noctilum, and unfortunately, as I've said before, I technically did the thing where it's like I entered a new continent and it said, Discovered New Continent! 
off screen, unfortunately. So, but I basically as soon as that happened, I did go back. So I've not actually seen this place before. Before I recorded this, I guess. So let's go through this valley. See what Noctilum is like. Well, this is kind of, um... Mesmerizingly beautiful. The mouth floor in this place is kind of just impressive. As you can see, there's quite a bit to Noctilum already. Even compared to Primordia. Like there's just ferns and trees and multicolored plants and... Rust pool banks. And these mushroom like plant structures. And a base of. Uh, wait. Bases are not plants, usually. So we can gather that this place is dangerous, not surprising. And there are indigents that actually camouflage themselves as plants and such. So we should be careful of them. Maybe we should take on one of these things. The Lake Mandible. That's probably not what it says. I'm sorry on my screen right now, the text is not the most visible. It'll probably look a bit better for you. So you'll be able to see what Axie says. Doing well against this enemy so far, but... They do have an attack that will paralyze us, for, but only for like a brief amount of time, it seems. So just kill it and knock it down to the ground. Yeah, and that's... I shouldn't have been surprised, that's... That's how they hide on you. As soon as you attack them, you actually knock their petals off, that's pretty cool. The paralyzing isn't that good, though. I think the battle dialogue kind of overshadowed the victory dialogue. Whoops. We should fight a lot of these things, because if we don't... We're going to have to deal with much, much worse around here. Like that thing, maybe. Though, thankfully, it's not attacking us. Whatever that flying thing is above us. Yeah, it's not hard to not just be distracted by all the plant life. Environments of this game are just so, so good. I 
That was something a bit different. I'm not gonna botch the enemy names, you can see it on screen. God, there's this weird spider esque thing. Presumably, its weak point is that weird sack thing. There we go. Yeah, couldn't get a critical hit at the time. We did beat it. Uh, I don't want to know what you mean. I think I for talk I talked over you. Sorry. Let me just explore this place a bit more. Get a few more items, you know, the usual. By the way, this place does have its own collectopedia thing. So that means a whole bunch of new items to get. Anyway, as we end this off staring at the scenery, next time we're going to go deeper into Noctilum, uh, Noctilum, and see, see how far we have to go into to find what we're looking for. See you next time. God damn, this game's pretty.